afternoon, everybody. Today we're discussing and celebrating our cities, and I think a perfect start to celebrate our cities is by starting off this talk with this little clip. Beautiful song, as you can remember, by Freddie Mercury and Montserrat de Caballier uh, singing Barcelona because the Olympic Games were held then back in the 90s. And I think it's time for an ode of joy to our cities because there's so much going on in our city nowadays. Our cities are rapidly changing because of all kinds of developments. And I would like to show you what these developments are and what they mean for us as individuals in these cities because it's also uh, changing the walls we have. And of course, you know that for a couple of years now, more cities live in this planet, uh, more people live uh, in this planet in cities than in rural areas. So the cities are becoming much more important than they were a couple of dec decades ago, or maybe even a couple of centuries ago. This is where I live, in the city of, of Amsterdam. I live in the left corner here, uh, uh, under, under uh, uh, more specific over there. This is uh, the wharf of the East Indian Trading Company. So my house is built on, on, on that side. But it was, has been changing quite a lot uh, in the last centuries. Uh, this is what it looked like during the East Indian Trading Company times, building all these ships and sailing all over the world. Uh, this is what it looked like almost 100 uh, years ago, changed a bit. Uh, uh, one of the headquarters became the Maritime Museum, and then it became an area where normal people live, people uh, before live, uh, working on the wharves, and uh, this was one of the pictures taken of the street life in 1900 of the island that I'm living in, in Kattenburg, in Amsterdam. But then something's happened. In the 70s, the island I live in now uh, has been demolished. All the housing you just saw, they were crumbling, they were they're, they're getting too old, they were beyond repair, so it was time for something completely new. So again, the, the island I'm living in now has been completely changed because this is what the island now looks like. Part of it is still the maritime area, so where the, 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 the Dutch Navy has, uh, has part of its offices, but also housing blocks, and they look a bit like this. Uh, maybe a bit more, less idealistic than they were a uh, hundred years ago, but I think I still really like the view of my apartment outside over my, over my uh, borough. So my borough in Amsterdam has been changed quite a lot in the last centuries. All these, de de all these development, developmental stages have been changing quite a lot, but actually this is happening again to our cities again. Again, all our boroughs or our cities are changing, but not by demolishing them, but increasingly because we can use our cities and our boroughs much more in intensively than we could before. And actually, we are part of this building of these cities. We can now build the cities ourselves. We don't need construction, construction builders anymore. We can do it ourselves. <laughs> Let's look to several examples why we don't have to demolish our cities anymore. It's like what happened to my borough uh, a couple of dec decades ago and how we now are part of the chains ourselves by the tools we have nowadays with all these developments. So for instance, this example. Huh? Before, our cities were surrounded by factory areas and their products were produced. But now this is uh, what produce our products. In every room uh, of our apartments, of, uh, of our office blocks, we can now produce all kinds of products ourselves. We don't need the factories around our cities anymore to produce something. Our cities have become the factories because we have now tools like 3D printing. And we can make beautiful products with them. And we can make this with Iris van Herpen, a famous fashion designer, very successful now in Paris. Uh, we can do this. We can print 3D guns. This one was, uh, was, uh, was bought by the uh, Victoria and Albert Museum, the first three printed gun. Maybe not something we're looking forward to, but we're also now constructing our houses just by 3D printing. Here you see the walls of a house being built with a 3D printer. But this is not the only thing that we now can produce ourselves within our cities. Before, this was the picture of energy production. 
had before we had coal plants, maybe even nuclear installations outside our cities producing the energy we need for our cities. And now this is what our cities are going to look like. Our cities have become the energy producers themselves. Our cities, we as citizens of these cities, can now with solar panel energy produce the power within our cities and not depend anymore on these utility companies. So our cities have become energy producers. They've become places where we can produce things. We don't, we don't have to do it outside our cities anymore. But we can do it within our cities. But also our work is changing within our cities. Hey, before it was a pretty simple picture. Hey, we had to go to an office block because that was the work was and it was a computer. So in the morning, we left our cities and we went to our cities in quite a horrific tra traffic jam. Maybe sometimes you still have this problem. Then we go to this really inspirational places to go to work uh, on a very well centralized way. And then at the end of the evening, you go, you go back again to your traffic jam. But that's not very logic, is it? I mean, nowadays, most of our work is considered done by email, uh, by getting rid of all these emails, emails in your inboxes. And that can actually be done anywhere, any place, any time. I mean, hanging on your building blocks, like I could do, or maybe like an R&M, a school where a classroom is being used by parents of the kids to do their work instead of going in a traffic jam and going to another city for work. So again, our cities are fundamentally changing because all these things we normally had to do outside our cities are now being done in our homes or within our cities. And this is not the only story. I mean, before, we had special places in our cities where tourists or business travelers could go to and then make use of the facilities of the city, like a hotel. But of course, we know over a couple of years that the whole city has become a hotel. Platforms like Airbnb give every individual with a few square meters of an apartment or a room the availability to become, to become a hotelier. And so in my areas, these individual apartment owners or, 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 or borrowers uh, are now using their apartments to share it with tourists or with business travelers because they want to make some money, they like to do it, or all kinds of other reasons. But these apartments can also, be, also become restaurants. I mean, why wouldn't you use your, your apartment to become a restaurant? Because you like cooking, because you like, you like to have friends over, or, or people you don't know yourselves, or again, maybe to make a few euros. And of course, this was also something done outside our cities. Food production. I mean, great plants, uh, great rural areas where we are producing our, uh, our, uh, our food increasingly. And now, this is how we produce our food. Within our cities, on, 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 on rooftops, uh, etc., etc. So actually, our cities are becoming a bit like spaceships. Because what's one of the most important aspects of a spaceship? Well, a spaceship is completely self-sufficient. I mean, you can't go to space for decades if you're not sufficient, self-sufficient on your energy, on your food production, etc., etc. And our cities have become exactly that. They can produce their own energy. They can be used for, for, uh, for reasons beyond imagination, like for a hotel or a restaurant or the energy production. Actually, our cities are becoming more and more city-states. They become less and less dependent on the regions outside the cities. Actually, most things can be done nowadays in the cities ourselves. So it's not a coincidence that we see these kinds of books popping up. Huh? What if mayors rule the world? Huh? What if we don't think about nation states or other kinds of, uh, of uh, old ways of organizing our governments and, and our, and our cities? Uh, but what if we make the cities the most important aspect of politics, of, of governments, uh, and the cities within themselves? But that's only half the story I would like to share with you today because there's something even more crucial happening to our cities, which is as important of the role we can play in the cities in the coming decades to come. Let's have a look. I can look to this clip for hours and hours and hours. These are, of course, images from Google Street View, and they're uh, montaged together as one clip of, for instance, the city of New York. 
our cities have become transparent. There's so much now we know of our cities by Google Street View, by all kinds of other different data, and now there's so much data we can use for our cities that we have become very smart as citizens, and we can use it to empower and to change the cities that we want to live in. And for instance, uh, maybe a funny example, uh, how much we know about our cities. Hey, for instance, you want to go out with your friends and you want to have drinks, or you want to go to a restaurant, so you think, well, how, what about this bar? Well, it's a bar you, you may be frequent uh, now and then. Let's check if How of the Moon is a nice place to go to uh, tonight. Well, it's handy because uh, in Boston, uh, but in uh, many other different uh, cities in, in the US, they have a system called SceneTap, and SceneTaps make sure that in many restaurants and bars there's a webcam, and the webcam um, uh, scans all the faces present in the bar or in the restaurant. So all the faces, all the people who are like here in this church, they're, uh, they're scanned by the webcam, and the webcam then produces data which can be found on the website or on the app of SceneTap. So what do you know before you go to How of the Moon? Well, you know before you go there already how many men and women are there, what the average age is of the people in the bar of the restaurants, and, uh, uh, and the average age, which can be quite crucial uh, depending on your activities for the night, right? I mean, what do you want to do during the night? It can be important what the average age is, or maybe uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, the difference of, of, of the availability of, of the sex, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So we now know where to go to, because this is the bar we like, because of the age, or because it's not too busy, or it's actually really busy. Well, then we have to find a parking space, right? If you don't go by a bike or by car, for instance, in US cities, well, you have to find a free parking spot. Well, that has been taken care of, of course. Increasingly, you have the data for free parking spots in our cities, so we can go there quite easy. And once we're there, we check in so our friends and our colleagues know where we are, uh, but maybe also be because you want to become a mayor of such a, of such a restaurant and a bar, and you get a free drink or you get a free parking space because you're the mayor of this restaurant or bar because you're such a frequent traveler and you check in quite a lot. Um, and I'm not sure if you are big checking in people, but this is the map of Europe when it comes to check-ins in the last 24 hours. Um, I think you see a particular part of Europe which is quite checking in all the time uh, on these apps. Uh, yes, it's, uh, it's, it's the Benelux and the Netherlands even more specifically. But this is a fun example. But what, we, what can we do with this data if we want to optimize the lo logistics of our cities? Like in Geneva, this is the mobile phone use uh, between 5 and 6 in rush hour. What do we see happening in our cities? Can we make it more efficient? Can we make people move in different ways so we don't have all these traffic jams? We can inform people or inform the police of crime and then see if we can solve cases or, or shifts with policemen and police women uh, within the city to make sure that these things are not going to happen. Or why don't we become as citizens ourselves involved in these kinds of developments? Hey, like this beautiful app, uh, Burgernet here in the Netherlands, which makes all of us actually an assistant police officer. I mean, if there's a crime going on, you just use your smartphone, you make a picture, it's, it's detailed, uh, it's detailed to going to the police, and the police can act on it uh, by themselves. So they're well informed in security of their own cities. And that's, of course, what's really happening. We are, as individuals, have become really, really smart in using our cities. We can produce the energy, we can use our, uh, our, our houses in many different ways, we can work there, we can produce the energy there, we can make products uh, over there, and we also can use all these data to become smart citizens and make the cities the cities that we would like to live in. So these construction builders, the, the, the former people constructing our cities, have become more and more obsolete, and more and more we have become the constructors of our own cities. Not by demolishing our cities, but by building up the cities we like. And this is how I would like to end, because this is, of course, the former picture of our cities. Yeah? A, a special place for a hotel, a special place for work, a special place for producing our energy. And because of all these developments, actually, our cities are melting. There's so much energy coming into our cities because of all the possibilities we have as individuals that actually our cities are becoming more and more liquid. They're melting. All these connections between the cities, between citizens, citizens of cities are now being connected to each other. We can use these connections to make the cities we actually would like to live in. But of course, then we need, well, we need a swimming certificate in this liquid city so we can actually make all these connections in this new way of living together. Well, I'm positive about that we can make these connections, that we have the right instrument, the right tools, but also the right capacity to do this as individuals. But are we willing to, and can we do it together increasingly? And if we do, if we are 
ready to make the jump into this liquid city, I'm really, really sure, just like this uh, 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 jumper did during the Barcelona Olympic guys, uh, uh, games, that we can have really the ideal city in a couple of decades. Thank you so much.